Okay, so let's try the uh, next coding exercise. So open the leadcode.com and go to the problems uh, tab and the search question. Search question number 122. So best time to buy and sell stock part two. So we already covered part one. So if you go to like 121, so 121. So 121 say best time to buy and sell stock, which is in the easy category and 122. 122 say best time to buy and sell stock part two, which come under the medium category. So the easy category, like which we already covered, and I already uploaded the video. So if you want to look at this video, you can like uh, go through this video. And what I believe is <clears throat> like uh, even though like 121 and 122 both are very easy, right? But I believe the one which come under the medium category is much more easier than the uh, this one 121 okay so if you have to go through this uh, video you can go through here like it's already uploaded okay so let's close this 121 so let's uh, figure it out 122 okay so best time to buy and sell stock part you are given an integer array price so some array is given so these are the prices of the stock where prices of I is the price of a given stock on the I a day. So as an example, so let's suppose uh, this stock uh, uh, price are of Facebook company, right? Or maybe the lead code company. So on the day zero or, or the day one, uh, the price is seven. On the day two, price is one. On the day three, price is five. On the day four, price is three. So see, and, and go on. So for the one company, so first day, the price is this, and then it go down, then it go again up, then it go down, then it go up, then again down, right? So what we have to find, <clears throat> on each day, you may decide to buy or sell the stock, right? So what you can do is, you can either buy the stock or you can either sell the stock, right? You can only hold at most one share of the stock at any time. So it doesn't mean you will buy here and you will buy again here. No. If you buy first, you have to sell. However, you can buy it immediately, sell it on the same day. So like what that means, so let's suppose if you sell on like number five, you can like sell, like sell on the morning and on the same day, you can even buy at the same price. So maybe you think, okay, now I am getting the profit. I'm going to sell and let's buy on the same price. And maybe I am going to sell in future, right? <clears throat> find the maximum profit you can achieve. So we need to find the maximum profit. In the question number one twenty one, it is mentioned we need to find we can we can like uh, here it is mentioned you may decide to buy, buy and sell the stock. You can hold and you can you can buy it and sell it the same day. So basically, in this question, we can buy, we can sell, we can buy, we can sell multiple times. And we need to like find the maximum profit we can achieve, right? In the question number 121, it is mentioned you can buy and sell only once. So you need to find the day on which you need to buy and you need to find the day on which you need to sell and you need to find the profit. So they are like uh, we took the concept of the maximum profit. And this is like much more easy. So let's go to the diagram. So so this is like uh, I just draw this like a uh, seven one five three six four in this way. So on the day one, so the price is seven. On the day two, price is one. On the day three, price is five. On the day four, price is three. On the day uh, five, six, and then four. So like price is decreasing, increasing, decreasing, increasing. So you need to find the maximum profit, maximum profit. But you can buy and sell any number of times. So if you like, you are on the day one on the day seven, right? So whether you need to buy or not, how you are going to know, right? How you are going to know. So if you buy at here, seven, and if you sell at one, then you are the loss. You add, add the loss, all right? So what we can do is, we need to compare with the, basically the next element, all right? So if I buy at one, buy at one and if i sell at five then i have the profit so basically let me open the text so if i buy at one buy at one and sell at five then my profit is five minus one is equal to four right and then 
I can even again buy at 5, but should I buy on 5? Because on the next day, stock is going to decrease. So I know the next day, stock is going to decrease, so I'm not going to buy. So should I buy on 3? Yes, I can buy on 3 because on the next day, stock is going on the 6. So I can buy on 3 and sell on 6 and the profit is 6 minus 3 is equal to 3. Okay. Should I buy on 6? Because even, even though I sell on 6, I can buy on the same day. But, but should I buy on the 6? If I buy on the next day, I have to bear the loss. So I will not go to buy. So should I buy on 4? Okay. If I buy on the 4, when I go, I'm going to sell? I can't sell. Right. So total profit is total profit is 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. 4 plus 3 is equal to this 4 and this 3 is equal to 7. Right. So if you go here, so total answer is our 7. So first is 4 and then 3. So 4 plus 3 is equal to 7. So this is much more easier. So what we have to do is we are going to scan the whole array. We are going to start at this position or, or any position. We are going to compare with the like uh, the previous position. Uh, should I sell or should I buy? Because if I know the next day, if I know the if I know the next day, if I know this one is greater than seven, if I know this one is less than seven, right? So I will not going to buy. I will going to proceed further, right? So let's jump into the code. So what we have to do is. So in the starting, we need to return the profit. So in the starting, we will take the profit as a zero. And then we are going to run a loop for i in range of. So from where I going to start? If I start from here, like anywhere, like you are going to start at one or you are going to start at this. So we are going to start at this because if I start from here, then I can run the loop till here. If I start from here, then I can run the loop till here. So it's up to us. All right. Because I need to compare for, uh, like uh, I, if I start from here, I need to compare for the next day. If I start from here, I need to compare for the previous day. Right. So it's up to us. So for I in range, we can start from here. So length of prices. Okay. So what we have to do. So we we start we are like uh, starting from here. Right. So should I buy at this price or not? Uh, like what could be the profit so what i can do is if prices at i index is greater than if this price is greater than the previous price all right so basically like uh, let's suppose if we have the array seven and then nine all right so what i'm checking if this price is greater than the previous price then i am going to i am going to sell I'm going to sell I'm or I'm going to like uh, buy. So so this is one because we don't know if it, it is one or it is nine. So it could be anything. So let's suppose our array is seven and then 13. All right. So what I'm checking if the price at this index is greater than the previous index. So if the price is greater than is greater than the I minus one. So if it is greater then I know I will buy here and I'm going to sell here. All right. So I know I am going to buy, I am going to sell. But in this case, in this case, the price is I on the next day is smaller than the previous day. So I know if I buy on seven on the next day, it's going to reduce. So I'm not going to buy. So I will, I will, I will like uh, jump here. All right. So if, if the price is at, so now our loop will reach it. So if the price is at I index is greater than the I minus one. So five is greater than the one then I am going to calculate the profit. Profit is equal to profit plus then the prices of I and then minus prices of I minus 1. So I calculate the profit. That's it. And in the end, I'm going to return the profit. So it's very simple, straightforward. So what I'm going to do is, so I reached here. So, okay, the loop is, uh, let's, so let's uh, start it the loop. So we are at here. So we started from loop here. Okay, one. Is the one is greater than seven? No. So it means we are not going to purchase at seven. Okay. Now the loop is here. Is the five is greater than the one? So we know because basically we are checking the future. We are checking the future. 
So is the five is greater than the one? So we know five is greater than the one. So it means we are going to buy. So we are going to calculate the profit. So five minus one is equal to four. So we add into our profit. Okay. So now uh, we like uh, we reach here uh, or we reach here. So three. So is the three is greater than the five? No. So it means we are not going to buy at five because otherwise we have to be at the loss. Now we are at here six. So is the six is greater than the like uh, the previous three? Yes. So we are going to, going to purchase at three and six minus three is equal to three. So basically we are, whatever we are index, we are checking with the previous value. We are check, basically the, we are checking the future value. We are checking the future value. If future is greater than the previous or you can say the current, then I'm going to sell. Sell means profit. So if the future, future means I, or like if you think it's confusing, better you can start from the zero and you can check if current index is greater than the zero plus one. Like if zero plus one is greater than the like the I plus one, basically you can start from that as well. Okay. So now let's try to submit it. And at the end, we are going to return the profit. Let's try to submit it. Run. So our solution has been accepted. Let's try to submit. So like uh, we are beating 78% of the people and our solution has been like uh, accepted. Okay. So maybe like this is confusing because we are starting from the I and we are checking I and I doesn't look like a, a future. It is future. But if we use I plus one, then it seems it is a future. So we can like uh, do that as well. Okay, so I modify the code and let's uh, let's uh, like instead of starting at zeroth index, we can start at the seventh index. So should I buy on seven or not? How I going to know should I buy on seven or not? If I know the future price, then I can decide should I buy or not. So similarly, we uh, like we did. So earlier in the previous code, we start from zero. Uh, like we start from one. Now we are going to start from zero. So I am currently on the zero. I I am currently on the zero. I am currently here, and should I buy or not? So how are we going to know? If I know, if I check, if I check my current price, current price means zero. If I compare, if my current price is less than the future price, less than the future price, basically the future is future is high, future is high, right? In the future, the price is going to be more. Then I am going to calculate the profit. Profit is equal to so I plus one minus I. So as I told, either you can start from zero. If you start from zero, you need to... Uh, run the loop uh, till six, till six, because we have to calculate the next one. We have to we have to compare with the next one, All right? So if you start from one, then you have to compare with the previous one. You have to compare with the previous one. So it's up to you. Both both solution is going to work. So if you try to run this, so our solution has been accepted. It have to submit it. So our solution has been accepted. So both the solution is going to work. So in this. In this solution, we start from one, and in this solution, we start from zero. So both the solution has been accepted. So it's up to you. So if you start from zero, then it is like much more easy, much more clear because I have in the current, I will check with the future. If future is more, I want to profit, I'm going to get the profit. You start from zero, a little bit confusing because we are checking the previous, All right? So that's the end of the video. Uh, you can also try uh, the same. Uh, thank you.